morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to another episode of Technique Tuesday. I'm Tina with Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. Today's technique is actually called Sparkly Stained Glass. Um, I found as I was looking at this one, because I've done it uh, for many years, I've done it a certain way, and I was looking for a different way to do it. Well, I did find three or four maybe ways to do it. Uh, aside from the original way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the original way and then a way that I created. I didn't see, I couldn't find a tutorial for it, but it worked. So I'll let you decide which way you like doing it better. So I'm going to show you the two different ways. And um, this is one of the cards we'll be creating. And we're going to start with the original way that people do this technique. It's, it's really pretty. It's great during the holidays. It's great anytime. But so what I have here, you'll need some window sheet. So I have some window sheet. You also need for the original way, you also need a 3D lacquer. Um, crystal effects, if you still have some of that that Stampin' Up! used to sell. This is the same thing. This is 3D lacquer. You can get this at the craft store. I've had this bottle a long time it lasts a long time um, you'll also need some ultra fine glitter which I have my dazzling diamonds and if you've seen any of my other episodes I keep my dazzling diamonds in a little kind of applicator bottle so I don't have as much glitter everywhere during the holidays I can kind of direct it to where I need it so for this first one you also need stays on black stays on to stamp on window sheet. You can also do like I did on this one and we'll do this is I black embossed this one on the window sheet which kind of gives it that you know that ridged feel of stained glass so we'll do that one the second way but for this one we're going to use stays on which is the way they originally do it and when you're doing window sheet, I would suggest using your stamparatus or stamp positioning tool if you have a MISTI or whatever. Um, because this is a slick surface, it's really kind of hard to stamp straight down and back up without it smearing. So we're going to use our stamparatus. And uh, for this first one, I'm going to do a fall leaf. And we will be using the leaf that is in the new Gathered Together, this fall leaf right here. Um, it also has a die cut that will go with it. So that's kind of why I want to use this one. So we're going to use this fall leaf here. Oops. Oh, I just dropped the stamp. Hold on. Oh. Okay. So we have our fall leaf. You also, I would have your um, silicone mat available because that's what we'll work on once we stamp our leaf. So it doesn't really matter where you place this on your piece of window sheet. I put a piece of tissue behind my uh, window sheet so you could see, see the sheet itself. So let's pick up this and you see how it's really sticky. Well, what we need to do is bring in your uh, embossing buddy. And let's go ahead and get some of the static and sticky off of there. And we'll ink up our stamp with stays on. This is regular jet black stays on. I suppose if you have other colors, you can use them, but is it, is it me that's weird, but I love the smell of stays on. It has an interesting smell for an ink. Okay, let's stamp that down real well. Oops. Still kind of stuck. Okay, we got a nice clear image. Oh, I was going to also show you. I don't know if you saw in the catalog this um, this new uh, stamp cleaning pad. 
This thing works excellent at removing stays on. I will put a link to it in the uh, remarks, but look at that. It just takes stays on right off. Love it. Look at that. Got it right off there. I probably need to ink it. It comes with a little refill. As you can tell, I use it a lot for my stays on. It cleans regular ink, too. But it's, it's a really nice little cleaner. All right. Let's move this aside, and we're going to do our leaf. Now, on the original uh, way to do this t technique, you had to, um, you'll work, we work from the back side, okay? So this is our, our stamp side, so we're working from the back side. On the original tutorial that I found from years ago, you would use your 3D lacquer, put it on your image, and you would use different colors of glitter, well, now we have alcohol markers. So what we could do is just color our image and co and cover it with one uh, one glitter, the clear glitter. So I'm just going to take some of my alcohol markers here. And a little make us some fall leaf colors here. So let's do a little bit of mango melody. And this will dry really well on your window sheet. So I'm just going to randomly color some spots because we're going to make a multicolored leaf here. So there's our mango melody. Let's do a little bit of dark pumpkin pie. You will find you'll want to use uh, the darker side of your markers, you know, instead of the light. It'll show better through the window sheet. So I'm just adding some random orange here. Let's add a little bit of, this one is your dark uh, uh, Calypso Coral. Now if you get your marker into the other colors, before you put your lid on, just simply wipe it like this and it'll take any where you've mixed color onto it. It doesn't hurt it. Let's add some green to this. This one is the dark granny apple green. I want to add some green highlights in here. And what you can do to see how your colors are blending is simply flip it over. I don't know if you could, I need the kind of the white background there. So I want to add a few more dark highlights some of orange in this. This is the Calypso Coral, actually. And since you're die cutting this, you don't need to be super precise. Okay, so now what we do, is you're still on the side that you're coloring, okay, you're still on your, your back side. Now we're going to take our 3D lacquer and we're basically going to coat our leaf. It doesn't have to be really thick. You just want enough that the the glitter is going to stick to it. So I'm just kind of coloring my leaf with the 3D lacquer. This looks really neat when you do ornaments and things like that. And this lacquer will kind of smooth itself out. So just use the tip to kind of spread it around once you put some on there. That's how I do it. And then it it kind of, in just a couple seconds, will start to level itself out. So just make sure you have everywhere on your leaf covered. Oops. Try to get my lid on there. Now you're going to take your dazzling diamonds and just sprinkle it over it. 
And now this takes a little while to dry, so once once you get your glitter on there, set it aside to dry really well before you try to run it through your your big shot. I'm going to try to move my glitter around here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And now, out of the magic of camera, here's the one I did earlier. That is the stained glass glitter. And then when it's... Um, when it's done and it's die cut, when you put it on your project, look how pretty that's going to be. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so that's the first way. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to show you the way I came up with that I think is just a whole lot easier and a lot less mess. Let me clean up some of my glitter here. I usually just grab a wipe and it picks it right up. But I did learn um, not so long ago that there are a lot of people out there that do not like dealing with glitter. I get it. I get it. It's messy. And I was going to show you. Here's a little stained glass Christmas tree I did. Did the same way we just did that one. Isn't that pretty? So I just used... Um, my dark granny apple green and then did the glitter on it so we'll set that aside okay now on to the way i think you're really gonna like in doing this okay so i've got some double-sided adhesive your double-sided adhesive there'll be a link to it you'll need your window sheet this is just regular window sheet i put a little um tissue paper on the back side so you guys can one so I can also find the window sheet when I'm working and then you need a little piece of cherry cobbler which we're going to mat our image on and now the trick your sparkling dazzling glitter paper it's going to work in the place of our glitter and I'll show you how we'll do that so let's do like I said, I was going to show you how to emboss this. So let's, again, I always like to use my Stamparatus, especially for this, because sometimes you only got one shot at stamping it. And then use your embossing buddy, definitely, because this has a lot of kind of smooth static to it. So I'm just going to make sure that's got some nice embossing buddy on it. We'll bring in our Versamark and our black emboss powder. And we are going to use this, which I just thought was the perfect for stained glass. This God's Peace set is its just beautiful. It's got some great um, greetings and sayings in it. But we're going to use our candles. Let's line that up. See, when you're dealing with window sheets, stuff kind of sticks to it. Let me make sure that stayed lined up. No, it kind of moved, so let me line it back up here. I want it kind of down to the bottom because I'm going to put a greeting at the top of my window sheet. So, we just about got it. I'm going to move that just a little bit more. I didn't have my magnets on it well when I... So let's put our Versamark on there. See how you sometimes only have one shot at it that so will kind of move your paper. So let's set that aside. Our 
black embossing powder. I really, you know, not just because I'm a uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I really recommend using Stampin' Up! embossing powders, especially for um, sensitive stuff like this one because their powders are higher quality and they melt better. So you're not having to heat this as much as you normally would have to with some of the, the cheaper embossing powders. They're not as fine. They don't melt as well. So use good quality if you're trying to do a, a good technique, you know, a fancy technique. I'm going to grab my little brush. Like I said, your window sheet has a little bit of static, so it, it may pick up some little spots. And just wipe them off with a little soft brush. Even though we used our embossing buddy. Okay. It just picks up the extra powder really quite a bit. And I missed a little spot of the embossing powder, so I'm just going to add some there. Okay, so we've got our image. Going to touch up a couple spots here. If you're going to be fussy cutting your image, you don't need to do this part. You can just, because you'll be trimming it off. But I'm not going to be fussy cutting this. There we go. All right, so now when you use your heat tool on window sheet, Make sure your heat gun is heated up before you start hitting your image because window sheet can tend to warp. So let's get our, our gun nice and warm. I'm going to heat a little bit from the back side. And now you want to kind of keep your heat gun moving. Once it heats up, you'll see it start to melt fairly fast. But if you sit in one spot too long, it could warp your window sheet. So just kind of keep it moving until it starts to heat up. And then you'll see it start melting. There we go. We're starting to melt. We're also starting to get hot on my fingers. This part right here can be a little bit tedious because of working with the embossing powder in the window sheet. So you can still do it with just your stays on black. I think we got everybody melting here. Okay, let that cool a little bit. Now we'll remove, and we're going to color this one. The exact same way we did the other. We're going to turn it over and color from the back side. So let's do that. So here I'm just using Mango Melody for my yellow because it's a nice bright kind of orange. So it kind of turns out yellow on the back side. Kind of get a little squeaky going on here on this window sheet. And you can always go back and add another layer of color once your your alcohol marker dries. So now I'm going to bring in my dark pumpkin pie. I kind of like using the feather edge doing this. It seems to color a little bit better. We've got our flames. Now let's bring in this one is our dark cherry cobbler. So I'm going to color our poinsettia with that. Get 
Okay, we got our poinsettia. Now for the the little pine, which you don't have a lot of space that's going to show on the other side because of the embossing powder. I'm just using the uh, dark mossy meadow. Okay. I'm going to use the dark granny apple and I want my candles green. Okay. And let's bring in our real red dark for our ribbon. It's kind of like nails on a chalkboard there, isn't it? I don't know if you guys can hear that on the video. I'm going to use my orange for the center of the poinsettia there. Like I said, you can go over this yellow spot just one more time and it'll make that a lot brighter. It does kind of layer it. There we go. So now our big trick is I've cut a piece of this um, sparkle uh, glitter paper. It used to be called Dazzling Diamond Glitter Paper, I thought. But I've cut one to the size of my project. Okay? Cut the same size of my project. And now I've also cut a piece of the uh, adhesive sheet to be the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel peel our adhesive sheet protector and this is your sticky there turn my glitter sheet upside down on it I have a little bit I have to trim off but that's okay and then I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish it really well get that adhesive onto that glitter sheet There we go. And then before I peel off the protective co cover, I'm going to trim my excess off. I wanted to make sure it went all the way to the edges, so that's probably why I have about an eighth inch excess, ex excess that I used. And it looks, well, that stuck to me. Okay, so now we're going to take off the protective, oops, I missed a trim there. Let me trim off the sheet. And now we're going to peel off our protective sheet. Kind of make sure our sticky stays on our glitter sheet. Kind of easier, just use your bone folder. Especially around your edges. So now we'll peel that off. And now with the embossed side up, where you can feel your embossing, we're going to line it up and lay it right over our glitter sheet. There you go. Look at that. It just created the whole stained glass look. And it's done. So you're not waiting for it to dry. I got a little bit of hair going on there. So there you go. Now let's put that. Oh, got to get my glue. Let's put that on a... You know what? I forgot to do the greeting. But that's okay. What I will do... So let's do the greeting, which we can still do right now. I'm just going to use stays on for my greeting. And let's use 
This is Itty Bitty Christmas. So let's use the season's greetings. I really like that one. I think it's really pretty. I like the script of it. So I'm going to line that up on here. Bring in our stays on. You could heat emboss this if you wanted to. I should have done it when I heat embossed the rest. Should have, could have, would have, huh? You know, you don't, you, you kind of impromptu some of these videos. Look at that. There we go. We got our season's greetings in a moment. Looks like I got a little spot there I might be able to wipe off. Okay, we fixed it. And then I'm going to bring my uh, stays on ink pad cleaner. Tip my stamp there a little bit. Wipe it off. Look at that. Got the stays on right off of it. I'll put a link to this that pad. It's just really neat. I didn't think much of it when I got it. I thought, oh, okay, just another... It would be a good pad, a cleaning pad to take with you when you're travel stamping. Then you've got a cleaner right there with you. Well, I use it all the time now for stays on. Okay. Got a little spot here. I'm wondering if I can get it off. It is window sheet. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take this stays on remover. Put a little dab of it on my wiper. Look at that. Took it right off. Okay, so our new stamp cleaning pad fixes stays on boo-boos on window sheet. Look at that. Wiped it right off. Okay. So now let's melt this onto our cherry cobbler. which I just did a quarter inch bigger. Got a little bit up. I got a piece of something stuck under there to get. There we go. Got it. Okay, we've got that. Now we need our card base. So this is a regular A2 card base. You could pop this up if you wanted to. Let's do that. Let's pop it up. Let's grab some dimension off. What's neat about doing it this way is uh, back in the drying bin, we're still waiting for the original way to dry. So you'd have to make make those and Go off and do something else for a while and while you're waiting for them to dry well if you do it this way it's it's already dry and ready to go I got my hair in the dimensional so we'll move this up just a little bit because I want to add a little bow. And I need my... So I have a little... I did the little striped ribbon bow. I really liked it. So let's... Trim my ribbon down a little bit. And I'll just take glue dot. Usually I take a couple of glue dots when I'm doing bows and stuff. Because you're putting them in and out of envelopes and stuff. So you want them to stick and let's just put our little bow right down here looky there you have a stained glass card that quick and meanwhile back in the drying bin we're still just a little tacky before we can run that through a um, die cut machine you could always die cut it first and then color it I suppose it's just easier to have the bigger sheet of paper. So I will take and put the, when this is dry, I will put together the um, card for it. So this is actually the one we just did this morning. Look at that. 
So it is going to make a pretty card. This one's still wet because I just stuck my finger in it. So when those are dry, I'll have a card down at the bottom of the post. And this is Sparkle Stained Glass Technique. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it today. Have a happy stamping day. Bye-bye now.